You may have seen quite a lot of Kyron Wilson, heard a bit about him, but we're here in Kettering and at his parents' house. We're going to find out what his life was like before he turned professional at snooker. Kyron, good, good to see you. You're all right, let me show yeah. you around. Lovely, thanks, mate. Look forward to it. Upstairs near, I'll okay. show you around my old bedroom. Okay. Not been here for a couple no of years now. There's no pictures of me on the wall in there, are there? <laughs> days oh, I must not. have been a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is uh, my old bedroom. Right. Um, it's a little bit smaller than what I remember, to be honest. That's I think it it's is. because my mum sort of packed her office stuff into yeah. it. Yeah, probably a bit tidier, maybe, as well. Would it yeah, be or not? Um, I think that's the first thing <laughs> she said to me today, actually. It's a better state than what I left it in. Just a, a little view out into the... Uh, my old snooker room as well. Yeah, how long has that been out there? You've always, you've always had a snooker room? Many yeah, years? Um, I'd probably say around seven, eight years now. Wow. Um, yeah, that, that was where a lot of the uh, solo practice hours took place. Um, but yeah, I've, I've now moved to a club now and yeah. the table's gone. So um, yeah, many memories mm. in there. Rob and Sonia, it's, it's not just about Kyra now winning all these tournaments, but the junior tournaments, you must have made a lot of sacrifices when, when he was young. An awful lot. Mm -hmm. Can yeah, you explain? It was, it, it was quite <laughs> tough actually, yeah. I mean, um, we were a, a, a one salary family through no fault of our own and um, it just meant things were always a bit tougher for Kyra. Yeah. You know, um, we used to go off to the, the amateur stuff and the junior stuff and um, maybe a pro-am up in Leeds or something and um, on the Friday night Kyron would sort of say mum I've just seen um, on Facebook everybody else is already up there and I used to say mm, we've got to get up at five and crack on and get at the motorway because we couldn't afford the hotel bill the night before you see and we just used to say to him you know when you get to that final seven o'clock on the next night um, you'll just be thinking you've had to work that much harder for it and um, yeah. yeah I don't think it's hurt him along the way to have, to have been like that to have yeah. to work hard for it and he works hard now so he knows that if he does work hard he'll get some results. I don't think people realise with snooker like any other sport you don't just turn up and you're good at it you, you've got to put in the hours all the time it's, it, it's yeah. the only way to succeed in anything you do isn't it? Yeah Absolutely. yeah and, and we've been very lucky over the years in that um, um, some snooker, snooker club managers have given Kyron free table time along the way they've believed us when we've said you know we think he's got a talent we think he might have a future in the game and they've allowed him to have um, some from free table time along the way. Um, we used to do all sorts, didn't we? we used to, I used to make players waistcoats for them to sort of Try pay some entry fees. Exactly. And what about the build up to a, a big match? Say you're playing at the Crucible, you know, you, you really want to have a good you know, run two or three days before, do you get tense? around the house, does he get, yeah. does he get like that? Well, you, you're best to describe he's, that, aren't you? He's a different Kyra and he's not shut off in a way, but he's in the zone already. Yeah. He's, you know, snooker Kyron and everything's got to be, tea's got to be at the same time, Finley's bedtime's got to be at the same time. He likes a routine before a tournament, don't you? Yeah, I mean... So everything's well, the same. I, I think it's... Uh, you know, safe to say, sleep's a massive factor. Um, and with a little little baby, sometimes it can be tough. Um, but yeah, Sophie does very well looking after Finley as much as she can. Um, when I'm away, it's not easy. Um, 
but yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't get where I am today without Sophie's help sort of off the table, which people don't see. No, that's right. I think at the sleeping business, you've got to get a few hours in before the match, you know, even if it means you have to go into another room or whatever it is, it's kind of not how it's meant to be, but there's no way around that, is there? You yeah. can't do the job properly if you're tired. Yeah, it's hard as well, you know, you, you're away so much as you know. Um, I want to see this little man as much as I can. <laughs> Um, so yeah, sometimes I don't want to be away, I want to spend as much time as I can with the family, so yeah, you've got to try and find a, a balance really. But your old pal Peter Ebden, he always said that when he was in, in an important part of his match, he used to think about his kids, yeah. that used to drive him on, do you, do you find that? Yeah, well, you'd know, wouldn't you, I think having Finley um, has certainly brought a, a different drive to me, hasn't it? Yeah, give me something to fight for. Yeah. It's, uh, it's sort of instantly made me grow up, I suppose. It was a game before, whereas now I've got to provide for him. So, yeah, I, I sort of relate to what Peter's saying there. But do you still enjoy the game as much because of that? I mean, what, I mean, what do you think? Is it? Do you still enjoy playing because it's now really a job and maybe the initial fascination with it is not there? Yeah, it's, it's sort of a mix between the two. Obviously, as you know, um, when you're playing well, there's no better feeling yeah. you know, performing on a big stage. Um, but yeah, now it's turned into sort of like, almost like a life or death situation I feel sometimes when you're trying to earn. Um, it can take the enjoyment away a little bit, but I sort of thrive off the pressure. Um, it makes me perform a little bit better, I, I feel. So um, having these two to sort of fight for um, certainly improves my game, I'd say. The last question, do you iron your own shirts and clean your own suits and everything no, or not? No, neither does well, Sophie, so that's a bad that. question to ask. Oh, uh, someone else does it? <laughs> well, Sophie does Mom it, does but it. just not very well. Ah, all right. Yeah, Mum gets the pleasure of washing and ironing. Cool. I burnt a waistcoat once and that was the end of my ironing days. Did you do it I think she did it on purpose, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I didn't realise how long he'd been into the game. I'm saying that, but some of these pictures you've got here, <laughs> like, how old is he in this picture? Uh, I think he was less than two, actually. Um, less than two? Less that is as two. young as I've heard anyone get yeah. interested in this well, game. His godparents actually gave him a golf set and didn't tell him what to do with it. And so he <laughs> naturally put the ball down on the footstool and turned yeah. the golf club around and started queuing. So I suppose that was the first early indications of uh, Kyron's interest in the game, really. <laughs> and I think this one's great as well. This, I think this does, I mean, first of all, I would, I, there's Peter, yeah. Peter's got hair, so that shows you how long <laughs> oh, ago it is. No ponytail, though. Yeah, no ponytail, no, no ponytail but he's actually got hair on his head. I would never have, if someone said that's a, 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 like a, a world ranking top 16 snooker player on there with him, I would not I would not have worked out his car and it's that long ago. Yeah. Peter had a lot to do with it really. <laughs> yeah, and I think that a lot of people know that Peter's you know, been linked with Kyron and he's been saying good things about him, but I, I, again, I didn't know it went back literally that long yeah. and that is 18 years ago now. I can remember that um, Peter used to um, have an academy over in Rushdom, which was which is about 10 miles that's away right. from here, yeah. and Kyron used to go to the summer schools there sometimes or for a day now and then and one evening it was a Friday night and I'd just finished work and um, really shattered after the long week sort of thing arrived at the academy and there was just Peter and Kyron playing and um, I looked at Kyron I was so hungry waiting for my dinner and just wanted to get home from work and Peter said um, is it alright if we carry on? I said, yeah, yeah, of course. I thought, <laughs> who stops their son from playing a, a, a world champion, you know, when that's Kyron's no. passion? And um, I actually sat there until 8 o'clock that evening and Peter just carried on and after every frame he kept saying, can we have one more, you know? And, and That's the snooker player's great. thing, just one last frame you say and then you say, well, that's definitely the last frame and the next frame is the very, yeah. very last yeah. frame that yeah. goes on like that. Yeah. Now, you can see this one here as well. This is uh, Jimmy. with the great the whirlwind there. Again, he changed a bit, didn't he? Yeah. Your lad. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. right? see how old it is by the price of the pints, isn't it? Oh, yeah, £1.47 <laughs> for a beer, that is going back, yeah. £1.47. <laughs> so, it's actually an exhibition in Northampton. And um, my mum won't appreciate me saying this, but she turned up late and uh, I missed my opportunity of playing Jimmy in the exhibition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. So, yeah, you can uh, tell by my happy little face. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, the, the number 10 cloth, um, they're not really designed to last very long, so um, yeah, just, just trying to get it done as much as possible with how the, uh, the tour is now. It's so difficult to recreate the conditions you play in. Yeah, definitely. And after two or three weeks, they don't play quite the same, do they? No, yeah, and I've, I've tried to get the lighting um, as bright as possible for the TV conditions as well. Um, like you say, it's very hard to emulate it, but I and think I've play, done quite a good job. They play tight as well when the clubs get on these tables. Yeah, yeah, and as you know, the tables are tight anyway, uh, so I know. it becomes almost impossible. How do you reflect on what happened last season with the, with your ranking tournament with and everything else that went on? It's a big improvement to how things were going. Yeah, um, I think it was just a, a culmination of, you know, the sort of struggle on tour for the for the years that I was on and off tour. Um, it made me very strong and want want to do well again. Um, and yeah, I, I just think it's just the experience of being on tour. You learn and you develop as a player. And um, yeah, I, I had a really, really consistent year last year after winning Shanghai and I think it was very important to follow up with good results after winning that and not be like a, a one-hit wonder almost. Yeah, I think you're a quick learner because when you first played at the Crucible and you lost to Ricky Walden, I it was obvious then you could play. I hadn't seen much of him before that. Mm -hmm. I thought once or twice you hit the ball a little bit hard, you missed a yeah. black off the spot and you over hit it, but he's, you've sorted all that out now, or polished all those sort of pop parts of your game up quite a bit. Yeah, that was, um, that was definitely something I took on board from that experience. Yeah. I, I realised that I was hitting the ball very hard. Um, I just, just think it was a pressure thing mm. every now and again and you know not playing on TV so much as as a new pro um, you know it, it can be quite hard to deal with so like I say I think it's just the experience of those occasions and um, being involved in those occasions more and more um, helped me develop as a player. But a new kind of pressure coming up uh, to defend a title which not everyone can say they've done and, and not all that many do successfully. Mm -hmm. um, yeah obviously a very nice position to be in. Um, to have a title under my belt at 24 already is a, a big achievement in itself so um, I love it in Shanghai. Um, it's definitely one of my favourite stops on the tour so I can't wait to go back there and sort of you know, see how the reaction is to me winning it last year as well. Well, you picked one to win in China. I mean, that is the, almost the, the flagship event because all the players like going over to, to Shanghai. Yeah, it seems like a, a very classy event when you're over there. You know, you've only got the 32 players instead of 64 what go out to a lot of events nowadays. So um, everyone who's there is there on merit and is obviously playing well at the time. So it's a very difficult event to win. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very proud to have that under my belt. And what about long-term ambitions? Obviously playing in the, the Masters will be one thing, but you've won a ranking event. It's something winning one is a great achievement to be, you want to become a multiple winner, no doubt. Yeah, it's, um, it's something that's high on my agenda. I don't want to be one of those players that wins an event and sort of slips away. Um, I want to build like a legacy to leave behind for my son to sort of think, you know, my, my dad was an all right snooker player. Um, so to win an event um, quite early on in my career, I think I've given myself the chance to do that. Um, but I've got to sort of keep grounded, keep working hard and you know, keep believing in myself.